Hi, this is Tom Cherry Holmes with the next video in the Amiga as a Workstation series. I wanted to take a small sidestep here and demonstrate the hold and modify or ham mode on the Amiga. We get to show in this video what the hold and modifier ham mode is, why it was needed, and essentially how it works and try to explain it on a fundamental level. We live in a very different world today. We live in a world where we have computers with graphics cards that have access to unbelievable amounts of memory, gigabytes of memory. And we can arrange that because we have access to so much memory, we can basically create situations in memory where we can say we want to put any color, any pixel of any color anywhere on the screen without limitations. We have enough memory to say that these pixels need to have a certain amount of red, a certain amount of green, or a certain amount of blue attached to them in any combination, as well as an alpha channel to do things like transparency, so we can quickly take and do transparency effects on the fly. These all happen in hardware now, and because we have access to all this memory here, we can efficiently take and represent these things in, uh, in memory on our modern machines, and we don't even think about it anymore. The Amiga, in contrast, has at most half a megabyte of graphics memory on these early Amigas. This was improved upon later. Later, it was increased to one megabyte of chip memory, and later still increased to up to two megabytes of chip memory officially on the hardware, and up to eight megabytes of chip memory if you could wire the RAM in. But because of that, the Amiga employed a uh, representation of these pixels in memory that's no longer really used anymore. This representation is called bit planing or bit plane graphics. We can see a representation of how this is put in memory by looking at uh, page, no uh, page 9 of the ROM kernel manual under graphics primitives. And we can see right here, the purpose of the graphics hardware is to scan the display from left to right to top to bottom. And at each point that we scan, we try to figure out which pixel we want to put in a particular position. Well, in the case of the Amiga, it takes and sets aside sections of memory that are called bit planes. A 1 in one of these sections of memory indicates that there's a pixel here, a 0 indicates not. And we take, and for each, for each set of bit planes that we have, we can think of them stacked on top of each other. And depending on which bits are set in the particular bit planes, goes into the color selection logic, ultimately to determine which of the colors that we can select. So if you have three bit planes right here, two to the third power gives you eight possible colors here. Adding an additional bit plane would double that to 16. Adding an additional bit plane on top of that would give you 32 possible colors. Adding an additional bit plane on top of that would give you 64. The number of bit planes that you can use depends on the, re the resolution of a particular line. On the Amiga, High resolution modes can have up to 16 colors or four bit planes. In low resolution, you can have up to six with some interesting caveats. So an example of this, for example, we could go into the pictures folder of our workbench demos. Sorry, not actually, it's in graphics. My apologies. And we can open up Molly. Molly is an example of low resolution graphics being rendered at five bit planes, 32 possible colors here to produce these balls with different shades, but all implemented as blitter objects. Whereas the fields demo here uses low resolution, but with fewer bit planes, 
so that you can take and render faster animation. The fewer bit planes that you need, the faster the Amiga hardware can take and move them around in memory, and therefore the faster you can animate them, and the less memory that they take up. And for the situations in which the Amiga was designed, bit plane graphics allowed for very efficient use of the memory inside the system. But recall I said that low resolution graphics could have up to six bit planes. There's an extra half bright mode that we won't cover in this particular video, but you can also use those six bit planes in a mode called HAM or Hold and Modify. And HAM allows you to use all 4096 possible colors on the screen at the same time with a few limitations, which we will get into. And that's the point of this video here. You can see that because we're able to use all 4096 colors here, we're able to do, and because of how HAM works specifically, we're able to do smooth color transitions from one color to the next, adding in an appropriate color combination, basically taking an existing color value, holding it, and modifying it, adding more green, adding more green, adding more red, and so on, moving down the line. We can also actually see it here in the colorful demo. And the interesting thing here is that colorful is actually documented. If you go to the ROM kernel manual and come all the way down to page 90, somewhere here, you will see the entire source code for this colorful demo. And one thing of particular note here is the hand box routine. And I'm pointing this out because you may notice something about the uh, individual colors being shown here in this demonstration here. You may see a bit of color fringing. We call this color fringing on the Amiga here, but artifacting as the program is attempting to create the color at the particular point on the screen in which we're asking it to do it. But in this case, it can't do it all in one go. So it has to take and modify each color component individually. And the program code is opting here to do each color component individually, modifying each one until it gets to the target color. So it produces something rather interesting. If we take and go into XMag, we can see this in, the, in better detail. If we look here, we will see that it first starts to modify the red color component, then the green color component, then the blue color component individually until it hits to the target color. And in fact, this is exactly what is described here in this comment here on page 75. So how does this work in practice? Well, I have a piece of code which you can grab from GitHub. I won't go into it here. If you want to take a look at it, feel free to take and go to that particular chunk of code on GitHub. We'll load it right here off of the disk here. There's a disk image which has the program with its source code right here and the demonstration program. In this program, is going to pause at certain locations here so I can explain exactly what's happening and how HAM actually works. We start by drawing the 16 base colors in the current color palette. Then we immediately take and build the next segment of each. We hold the red, green, change the blue. Then we change the green, green, change the red. Red, blue, change the green. And at each step of the way here, we are setting the base color over here and then just modifying it. So you're seeing a smooth color transition from the initial color here and adding in, setting each one of these based on the color before it, adding in until we ramp all the way up to just pure white, 15, 15, 15 in each case. We're doing this because again, we're not resetting the color, the base color values at all at this particular point. 
you can see the smooth color transition from the base color all the way over. Once this is completed, it will then take and place base colors, not just here, but here and here. And you'll notice something very interesting that happens as a result of all of that. This image, this display, this graphics mode is being generated dynamically. So if it, each color, if you have colors that are held in this case right here, they're affected by the color immediately to the left of it. That's the secret of the ham mode itself. It resets at the beginning of each line. So as we take and change what is being represented on the screen at different points, anything that's being held will also change dynamically with it. So we re-add the colors here and re-add the colors here. And you can see immediately as we take and change the base colors, we reset the base color to black in each case here. So you can see that we're changing and resetting what is possible right here with the blue, what is possible with the red, what is possible with the green. And as a sidestep, we'll actually take and come over here real quick and I will start up a copy of a viewer so we can look at this particular picture here. For, very, for reasons that I don't want to get into, the viewer doesn't want to work from the workbench, so we'll just launch it from here. And we'll take a look. Come on. I threw this together in Graphic Crack earlier today. And this is the anatomy of a ham pixel. In each case, what we have is we have our six bit planes and they're arranged a bit differently. Normally, you have, like say, up to five bit planes and depending on which of these five bit planes are set are the colors zero to 31. In ham, things work a little differently. You have the four bit planes up front, which are the 15, uh, 16 base colors. And then based on how these two are set, it changes how these four bits behave. If these two bits are zero, then we just pick whatever the colors are in the first 15 color palette check sections here. So those are the 15 base colors that we plotted here, here, and here. However, if we take and set one of these bits right here, or both of them, it modifies this behavior. So that what it's going to do here, say if we set this to one, it's going to take the color to the pixel to the left of this pixel and give it a new blue value. If you take and set bit five here, with bit four being zero, it does the same thing except for the red value. Set a new red value, set a new green value. These are not relative. It is replacing the red value, the blue value, or the green value with the value that you have here in these four bits. And you can see that it's very obvious here from what's happening. Because this color right here is black, we're resetting the base color to black. You can see that we ramp up the blue using the blue modify. We ramp up the red using the red modify. And we ramp up the green using the green modify. But again, because the color is already red here, we're adding blue. So that gives us a pink color here. And because we're doing this red here and we're just changing the red value, all we're doing is causing another ramping of the red here. Now you can see right here with the green component, because we start with, with the green component, we ramp up the green, we wind up with yellow, and so on, and so on, 
and so on. You can see that with white here, uh, because white is the complementary color of black, when we start ramping in colors here, we ramp back and then ramp up. See, I'm resetting the value. It becomes really obvious that we're resetting the values and not adding them together here with this last color right here, with the yellow color right here. Because suddenly this white becomes yellow, suddenly the white becomes cyan, suddenly the white becomes magenta. But you can see right here, if you understand the constraints of this mode, you can do very fine color gradations. It also means that if you want to be able to place any particular color value on screen at a given time, you either need to take and choose, that, choose the starting color from one of your base colors, or if you choose to take and use modify pixels in each case, you'll need three pixel values, up to three pixel values to set your target color. So with everything I've said here in mind, let's go ahead and run this particular demonstration again. base colors, and then we ramp up the base colors here. Modify, modify, modify. Modify the blue, modify the red, modify the green. And since we're modifying in each case here, that we haven't set any more base colors here, it's just gonna ramp up until every color is white, basically. From the starting point. I did this rather specifically to show exactly the fact that, yes, you can get away with just using modify pixels everywhere on screen. It works. The hold and modify mode will gladly do that. But you have to keep things in mind that if you're just going to use modify pixels, you'll need up to three possible transitions to hit your target color value as Rob Peck very helpfully points out over here in the manual. So again, you see all these colors right here ramping up, eventually hitting white all here at the end. Again, because we're just setting the base color here and just modifying it. But that's going to change the moment that we replot these base colors in these various columns here. This happens immediately after you do it, because the display is just being rescanned and rebuilt on the fly. Again, set the first set of base colors, set the second set of base colors, and then go ahead and redefine some of the base color palettes here so that you can see the difference. And how ham actually works becomes absolutely apparent. And again, because we're using intuition, because we're using the Amiga screen system here, Cam can be mixed with other modes in vertical orientations just fine. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave the video here. I hope this has been kind of an informative way to show how ham actually works. If you haven't and you would like to see more of this content, please subscribe to my channel. Please comment if this is more of the content that you would like to see or other topics that you would like me to cover. So until next time, guys, have fun.